on how our respiration is basically about. So in this case, we're going to see how uh, breathing is happening in animal and also in human. Okay, uh, so we're going to see two types of respiration. Okay, something called the uh, aerobic respiration. Another one is called the anaerobic respiration. So what difference is this? We're just going to see it right now. So aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration is the condition, uh, uh, the process where the oxygen needs to be present. And when the oxygen present, aerobic respiration can take place. And in this case, uh, high energy being produced is about 38 molecules are being produced. And aerobic respiration happen only in the mitochondria, where it's the powerhouse. Comparable to uh, aerobic, we have anaerobic respiration. And in case of anaerobic respiration, there's no oxygen. Okay, and it's mostly take place in the muscles. And in case of yeast, uh, fungus, okay, uh, a, a unicellular fungus where uh, yeast will produce uh, ethanol as the product. Comparable to aerobic, anaerobic will just gonna produce less uh, energy. It's just about two molecules. And this is basically happening in the cytoplasm of the cell. This is happening in the mitochondria of the cell. So obviously looking through this, we want our body to produce more energy. So we want it to be preferable aerobic. But not all the time we can actually have oxygen around us. In case of a, a sprinter, a marathon runner, they have no time to take oxygen quite immediately for the body and at the same time to release all the carbon dioxide and water. At, the, at that time, during the sprinting, the body going to switch from aerobic to anaerobic. Uh, no matter what, because oxygen are quite limited to uh, exchange during that time. And whatever you have, the energy, that's how you're going to basically uh, run and finish up the marathon. So that's why at the end of the uh, marathon, the person have muscle cramps because they have something called uh, lactic acid being produced uh, that cram the, uh, uh, the leg muscles. So further, we're going to talk about breathing, how humans are taking in and out the air and what's going to take place. First, we're going to see the example of inhalation, air going in. Uh, we have few uh, mechanisms taking place and few structure. Few, first, we have to appreciate. Okay, first, we are going to see something called external intercostal muscle. Intercostal means between the ribs. So they are outside. That's why we call external. And we have this bone. This is their backbone. And here we see the small, small uh, structure here, uh, yellowish color. These are your rib cage. And next we have this muscle over here, which is called the diaphragm. So all this structure gonna help you to breathe in and breathe out. And to easier to see, we have something called the uh, balloon uh, model, okay? Uh, we, you can actually, if you are in school, uh, if you do it in your lab, you can do it this model quite easily, which uh, each of these parts are representing the uh, part I've explained here. So we have the glass tubing here, which is your trachea branching into bronchus. Okay, this is your glass tube. And this bell jar is your chest cavity. And your balloon is basically the lung. And the rubber sheet is basically equivalent to the diaphragm that we have here. So when you pull down this rubber sheet, basically you're inhaling, the air gonna go in, expand this balloon, and the air is in, this, in the cavity. So this is how the model of inhalation look like. So in real world, uh, in real biological mechanism, uh, the air will actually move in first. Okay, when you move in, you basically can do the mechanism by yourself. Like right, right now, I'll be doing this. So when I'm inhaling it, you can see that rib cage is basically going to go out, okay, and upward. So it's going to look outer. So basically, air is filling up. Okay, and during this stage, the muscles, okay, the external gonna contract, the outside muscle gonna contract, the internal should be relaxed. Remember, this is your antagonic muscle. One need to contract, one need to relax. So external will contract, so the air can go in. And in this case, this diaphragm previously like a U shape, like a dome shape, will now be pushed to become flattened. And this is contracted right now. Because of these differences, okay, the volume increase because air is going in. Uh, normal uh, physics law, if the volume increase, the pressure should decrease. So volume increase in here, the pressure will be decreasing. Because of differences in the atmospheric pressure, high outside, lower inside, the air will be pushed in. So just recap, air wanted to go in, the rib cage will go upward and outside. The muscle of the external intercostal will need to contract, and when it push, this uh, diaphragm gonna be flattened, 
because of the differences in the pressure okay volume will outside is going to be going to be increased the pressure going to decrease and this will cause the uh, air to come inside the lung so this is how it take place and this happened quite quickly comparable if we want to breathe out so that's going to be different um, we can see that in case of exhalation the rib is basically going to move in and inwards so pushing all the air outside the diaphragm will go into its original shape which is curved and because the volume is decreasing the pressure will increase pushing all the air out and finally the uh, the air will gonna go out of this of the lung cavity similar to the lung model you just basically need to push the rubber uh, sheet and you can see the balloon contract air go out of the uh, balloon into outside the bell jar so these are the mechanism of breathing in exhalation and inhalation uh, we are seeing. So remember there are few structures and you need to know each structure how they are going to do each process. Uh, in this case, we are seeing the gas exchange. So once you already take the uh, air, so certain material, certain gas will be taken into the cells, certain gas will be released out of the body. So we have the structure of the alveoli, okay? So we have the alveoli here, which is the sex of the lung. And we have the blood vessels, okay, flowing. We have the red blood cells and we have the capillaries, very small uh, structure here. So blood will come from a high uh, carbon dioxide. Obviously this, I imagine you have your body cells here. Body will have a lot of carbon dioxide. So when, that's why this is in a blue color. When they reach to their capillaries, near your alveolus, all the carbon dioxide will diffuse, okay, uh, from the uh, blood capillary into the alveolus, okay, and uh, at the same time, we are also inhaling all the oxygen. Oxygen actually going to go into the red blood cells, and when they combine, they are forming something called oxyhemoglobin, where the oxygen are combined with the hemoglobin of the red blood cells, and finally, uh, these blood are rich in oxygen, and now it can go to other part of the body uh, through the uh, heart pumping and basically going to go to um, all the part of the body. So next, this, uh, the carbon dioxide and oxygen change happen in the blood capillaries. Um, there are situation we have a lot of all these carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide being actually released that we saw. Uh, it's not as simple as what you see from the previous structure. So body cells here will have the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide need to be released out from the body and it's not as simple as that there are certain uh, mechanism happening here so let's see carbon dioxide first need to pass through the capillaries okay this is the yellow color which is the blood capillaries the epithelial cells first will go into the uh, tissue capillaries area which contain the red blood cells so the carbon dioxide will first will be broken down into uh, uh, this two component, which is the carbon dioxide, uh, react with the water into something called the carbonic acid. Carbonic acid will be later broken down into the hydrogen ion and also the bicarbonate. And later bicarbonate will go to the lung for further processes. So this is how carbon dioxide in a very, uh, very complex molecule being actually broken down into a very simple molecule. Carbon dioxide get into the red blood cells uh, fused with the water, broken down into carbonic acid. Carbonic acid will be broken down into bicarbonate ion and also hydrogen and bicarbonate ion going to continue this process. So let's see what happened in the later process. So when it's already been in a carbonic, uh, carbon, bicarbonic form, uh, in a bicarbonic form, it's going to fuse with the hydrogen atom. Again, it's going to form the carbonic acid. With the enzyme carbonic uh, anhydrase, now it's gonna form a carbon dioxide. So basically to pass through the blood capillaries, it need to be converted into simple molecule. And finally, when it's already at the near the lung area, only it can actually diffuse into the uh, alveolus. So it's not as easy as we breathe in, in and out, but these process are the one taking uh, place uh, during the exchange of the material. So next, we're going to see how uh, the body tell when there are certain situations like uh, too much of carbon dioxide in your body. Uh, what the body will react first is 
in the example you are doing a lot of vigorous a uh, very uh, extraneous extreme exercise you are basically breathing quite fast because you are producing a carbon dioxide as the byproduct of respiration and then as i mentioned before carbon dioxide need to react with water to form carbonic acid and then they're going to go through all these uh, tissue fluid and the capillaries and then the body will actually detect okay there are two uh, the low ph because this is an acid carbonic acid is acidic because of the low ph in the blood vessels in the blood system it will basically tell the medulla oblongata which is located in your brain that they are acids in the blood so right now please do something to 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 excrete the the to remove this acid out so it will send the impulses to the respiratory control in our brain and they will analyze they will interpret saying that uh, these are the condition there's acid in the blood and then send back the nerve impulse to the uh, respiratory tract so saying that now uh, inhalation need to take place we need to have a forceful inhalation so you will start to breathe heavily during this exercise when you start to breathe uh, heavily you will going to take more oxygen that going to neutralize all the acids and basically the breathing rate going to be increased and the ph going to be back to the normal so acid will be removed and this is what going to take place in sense of vigorous exercise um, to maintain the blood uh, ph so we are done with the um, mechanism of human respiration so we'll touch on the uh, plants uh, gas exchange do remember that uh, like human plants also do respiration don't think that plant only do photosynthesis they do need to uh, take uh, oxygen as the uh, important to maintain their cells so in this case oxygen uh, from the outside as i mentioned before we have the gut cells the opening going to open oxygen going to go in into the air space it going to just basically dissolve in the mesophyll cells okay we have the spongy here we have the palisades and all the differences between the concentration of the outside and the inside going to be different and after similar by like human after they use they're going to basically remove the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is the dotted line okay the carbon dioxide going to go out into the uh, external environment so carbon oxygen go in used by the cells and the byproduct of carbon dioxide dotted line and remove out into the atmosphere simple as like uh, photosynthesis as well so let's do some recap okay so respiration it can be basically an external respiration where all the structure we have the rib cage we have the diaphragm we have the uh, alveolus are taking place inhalation and exhalation and in sense of internal we have aerobic and anaerobic aerobic we need oxygen more energy produced anaerobic uh, no oxygen less uh, energy being produced and we have all the gas exchange happening at the lung and the capillaries and also after the oxygen being produced the tissue capillary going to provide the blood cells with the oxygen and in case of the certain animal uh, there are some uh, having a very simple uh, simple uh, structure like protozoa they are unicellular some insect have certain adaptive which you can read uh, further uh in sense of like respiration in plant uh there are certain situation where uh, respiration go not going to take more but during certain time because during daytime photosynthesis going to be dominating compared to respiration um so there are certain uh situation where carbon dioxide is too much in the body that the brain senses it and basically going to regulate back uh, maintaining the balance and breathing rate and heart rate are different if you are nervous if you are like sitting for an exam your heart rate is quite increased because of this your breathing rate also quite can be increased so some people can have nervous uh, breathing rate and also heart rate and different condition if you are running if you are nervous and all these are also being regulated so let's see an example of a question so this is uh, showing the uh, human respiratory system uh, so we have certain structure here with the bone and without the bones uh, part so we have a and b so in a uh, we have two parts that need to be labeled so since this is showing to the more of the outer part of the uh, rib cage okay this is more uh, uh, of referring to the external intercostal muscle and obviously it's quite easy to appreciate that why is basically a rib cage okay that contain all the heart in the middle and all the lung and all the diaphragm uh, covering for protection 
Uh, state the breeding stage. So basically, you can see the diaphragm is curved. So if it's curved, obviously, the air is not inside. So if it's curved, exhalation are taking place. If it's flat, then diaphragm uh, is flat, then it's in, uh, inhalation. So it's curved right now. So remember, if it's curved, it's exhalation. Um, explain the function of X during the stage uh, here. During uh, inhalation, the muscle, which is the external, gonna relax because of this, the rib cage gonna move downwards and inwards. So basically, you can take the air in. Uh, what is the importance of gas exchange? Basically, if you have a gas exchange, you can get the oxygen. If you have oxygen, they will produce you energy. And at the same time, you will release all the unrequired waste like carbon dioxide during this uh, respiration. Next question is about characteristic of alveolus and how they are important for gas exchange. Remember that like villi in, uh, in digestive system are numerous. Villi is also a million in, uh, in, in number. So if there's a lot of villi, they're going to have a lot of uh, large surface area. Because of large surface area, efficient gas exchange is going to take place. And remember, alveoli is like very simple. They have like one thick cell wall. If they are not very, they are not thick in that sense. So if they are not thick, then gas exchange is quite simple in this sense. Uh, this is the mechanism of a process. Obviously, we can see there are some changes in the diaphragm, in the movement of rib. So let's see what's the process P. This is P and this is Q. So P refer when you can see the uh, diaphragm is actually curved, excavation because the rib cage also moving inside. And comparable diaphragm here is flat and the rib cage is moving uh, upward. So you can say this is an inhalation. So what the difference between P and Q? Um, in sense of you can give a lot of differences. You can talk about ribs, you can talk about my intercostal muscle, you could talk about diaphragm. So in here, I give you two examples. Uh, I will be talking about in external intercostal muscle. So in case of P, uh, need to relax. In case of Q, then uh, contraction will take place. Uh, in case of diaphragm, by diagram, you already know the clue. Uh, it is now relaxed here. Okay. In case of it's flattened, so it's contracted, being pushed down. So this is more of a hot question so a man is climbing a mountain describe what happened what the rate of respiration when the person reached the peak okay uh, as you go above the atmo atmospheric pressure which is the mountains are always have the lower atmospheric pressure compared to sea level so we will the body will detect there are less oxygen at that level so during this time, the body will send the impulses, the signals to the respiratory center in your brain and telling that uh, the muscles responsible for breathing need to relax and contract quite immediately. And the muscles of diaphragm, your external, your intercostal, going to do a lot of contraction and relaxation. By doing this, you're basically going to inhale more air, more oxygen going to go inside your body. So increase of breathing, increase of respiration, finally more oxygen will reach the body cells. So this is how you can start from the condition of less oxygen, what the body do, and finally how it maintain back to the normal. And this is also another uh, uh, K-BAT question. So this is how I mentioned uh, example before, a person is running for 100 meter sprint and the athlete uh, experience muscle cramp. Okay, and what actually happened to the person? Uh, we are, the person is running quite uh, frequent, like quite vigorous, and the rate of oxygen required by the muscle is not enough. Okay, the amount of oxygen received to the blood are not enough, and the body will switch from aerobic to something called anaerobic, where there's no oxygen. And during this process, you're basically producing less amount of energy. You do not have much ox much oxygen, and you're basically being a person who's called to have oxygen depth. You're basically getting energy without giving oxygen to the body. And in case the body is like being cut courtesy enough to produce energy, you need to pay back so the oxygen by breathing heavily at the end of the sprint. And during that stage, there'll be a lot of accumulation of lactic acid. This is acid and acid in blood is not good. So that, that's why you will have muscle fatigue and also cramp. Uh, which you can actually get better by uh, continuous uh, breathing at the end of the race. Uh, this is how uh, we see the glucose. 
uh, going through certain processes A and B and each of these will give you a clue what type of process is this. So in case of process A, there's carbon dioxide and there's a lot of molecule of energy. Comparable to process B, we are producing something called lactic acid and less of my energy. So it's very obvious this is aerobic respiration where oxygen is present. B is obviously anaerobic respiration where lactic acid are being produced. So this question B is asking you to write an equation. So if it asks you to write an equation, make sure you put the arrows and all the plus. And this is a word equation. So you start with the glucose. Given the clue in the question, you have lactic acid. So write your lactic acid and two ATP. You just basically use the information given in the question to convert it into an equation. Uh, even though the question in the part three says that you produce just two, uh, is it still important for the person? Uh, still, I would say it's important because still these two molecule, it's good enough. You have something rather than nothing. So in this case, the small amount of energy still will be helpful to keep the muscle going uh, during the anaerobic respiration. Um, a person who undergo anaerobic respiration, um, if they are carrying it out, they must stop the activity. Why we should do that? Because at this aerobic, uh, anaerobic respiration, there's less of energy and you will not able to continue the physical activity with this amount. And they already mentioned we have all the acids and too much of acid in blood uh, is not good, resulting in cramp and also fatigue. Okay, this is about the yeast cell, example of yeast cell. Uh, it's the typical animal cells. Uh, this is just a basic about cells. Obviously, this is the nucleus and this is covering it. This is the plasma membrane. This is animal cells. So do not label B as cell wall because cell wall is only in your plant cells. So in this case, uh, they give two conditions. If oxygen present, obviously aerobic. Oxygen not there and it's aerobic. Uh, this is an uh, application of how we can use uh, yeast in bakeries. Uh, people use uh, yeast to make bread because when you put yeast into your dough, into your, your floor, it's going to rise. That's why a small amount of dough can give you a very good amount of uh, bread. Basically, the yeast go, when go undergo anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration will produce uh, the ethanol and also carbon dioxide. Because our carbon dioxide is gas, it basically gives you uh, the donut or the bread to be really rice. Uh, this is also an application where you can see a student grow batches of yeast uh, in two different flasks. Uh, all the conditions are the same except one is with oxygen and one without oxygen. Explain why uh, yeast grow better in oxygen. Obviously, if there's oxygen, then that's going to be aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration, more energy more oxygen, more energy, more growth of rate is faster. But in comparable, if they're without oxygen, the yeast will undergo anaerobic respiration where it will produce ethanol. So yeast also being used in uh, liquor or beer factories where they will producing ethanol as the byproduct. So basically ethanol is uh, to be said toxic to yeast cell, so it will not grow in a proper way. Uh, this is uh, on the plant cells. Okay, we have the mesophyll cells. Here we have the lower epidermis, and the, the question is on labeling the uh, Z, uh, the, uh, the process of X structure of P. So label the structure X here. So X is basically the opening, is obviously stomata, and X is the cells close and opening the stomata. is basically a gut, so it's a gut cells. Uh, name the process where uh, the gas move from Y to P. That means from inside to outside the cells. So inside to outside of the cells, obviously photosynthesis. And when the photosynthesis happen, the oxygen will be released from P to Q. And all the animal, the human will use oxygen and also plant. Um, why the mesophyll cell is usually moist in the water? Because the gas going in, which is the oxygen, is required for respiration to dissolve and to use for the, uh, the, the, the plant to follow this uh, respiration. Explain the intake of oxygen from the atmosphere in the leaf, similar. So the oxygen going to be high outside, comparable to inside. Because of different in the pressure, atmospheric pressure, the oxygen going to diffuse into the uh, leaf. And if it's go into aerobic, and because of the differences, 
there will be continuous flow in and out of the gases. Uh, why there's certain time during the day the gas exchange between the leaf and the exomorphically does not take place. As I mentioned before, during the day, uh, the plant will be more active in photosynthesis comparable to respiration. So gas exchange is not so high during the daytime. So because they are more concentrating on the photosynthesis. So with that, we see some of the examples of photosynthesis, some of the respiration of human. Uh, 